The net present value is the sum of the present values of all the expected incremental cash flows if a project is undertaken. The discount rate used is the firm's cost of capital adjusted for the risk level of the project. For a normal project with an initial cash outflow followed by a series of expected after-tax cash inflows, the NPV is the present value of the expected inflows minus the initial cost of the project. For example, the initial cost of a project is $500 and the returns are $150 in the first year, $250 in the second and a final $400 in the third year. If the required rate of return for the project is 5%, the PV of the future cash flows will be as such. The NPV is therefore the sum of all these present values minus $500, giving us a figure of $215. Do note that the initial cost is $500, not minus $500, which is the initial cash flow. So what is the significance of this? The NPV can be viewed as the expected effect on shareholder wealth. So when it is positive, shareholder wealth is expected to increase. So in this case, an NPV of $215 means that the firm value will increase by this amount in today's dollar, if the cash flows pan out as expected. Do note that this is based on the assumption that the firm finances this investment at a borrowing cost of 5%. Now, let's change this required rate of return to 25%. Using this discount rate, we find that the NPV drops to minus $15. So what we have here is that for a firm whose borrowing cost is 25%, the NPV for the same project is minus $15. It should not invest in this project as the effect to the shareholder wealth is negative. And that brings us to internal rate of return. The IRR is the discount rate for which the NPV of the project is equal to zero. This implies that for firms which are able to borrow at a rate lower than the IRR, the NPV will be positive and the firm should accept the project. For firms whose borrowing costs are higher than the project IRR, the NPV to the firm is negative and the firm should reject the project. So how do we calculate the IRR? Simply equate the NPV to zero and solve for the IRR. Hmm, not so simple, right? In the exam, you have three choices. So you could use trial and error and work out which ones give you an NPV of zero. Or you could use your financial calculator, which we shall illustrate in the following exercise. TrimCorp is evaluating a capital project which requires $500 initial investment. The project is expected to bring in $350 in the first year, $250 in the second, and a salvage value of $150 at the end of the third year. The cost of capital for TrimCorp is 25%. What is the NPV and IRR of the project for TrimCorp? Should TrimCorp accept this project? Pause the video now and work out your answer. And we're back. For a start, let's draw out the sequence of cash flows for the project. Now, you may have worked out the NPV and IRR using the fundamental approach that we went through, and that's fine. What we're going to learn here is how to use the Texas Instrument BA2 Plus calculator to make the calculations. Check your answers against the calculator and see if you got them right. Let's first get familiarised with these functions. Take out your calculator and study the second row you'll see the CF, NPV and IRR keys. These are the function keys that we'll be using. On the row above, you'll see supporting function keys that'll help you to key in the cash flows in sequence. 
proceed through the following steps with your calculator. The first step is to clear out the memory in your calculator. Don't forget this step as there could be residual values stored inside the cash flow memories which could affect your calculations. To clear the memory, go into cash flow mode by pressing CF and then clear by pressing second clear work. Step two is to input the initial cash flow denoted by CF0. The initial cash flow is the cash flow at year zero. Key in minus 500. Press enter to store it and the down arrow key to move on to the next cash flow. Now you see C01 on the calculator. This simply means it's waiting for your input for the cash flow at the next time period. We see that there is a $350 cash flow at year one, so we key in 350, press enter, and press the down arrow to move on. Now you see F01 on your calculator. F stands for frequency. It's asking you how many time periods this cash flow is repeated. Since this cash flow is not repeated, we simply leave it as one and press the down arrow key again to move on. In step four, the cash flow is $250. So we key in 250 for CO2 and press enter to save it. Again, press the down arrow key twice to move to the next cash flow. And for the final cash flow, Simply key in 150 for CO3 and hit enter. You have now entered all the cash flows and the next step is to extract the answers from the calculator. To compute NPV, the calculator needs to know what the discount rate is that you reference from. Hence, when you hit the NPV button, it first prompts you for the interest rate. Key in 25, which represents 25% rate and hit enter and the down arrow key to move on. Now you see NPV written on your calculator, but it's not computed yet. Simply hit the compute button and you'll see your answer of $16.80. To compute the internal rate of return, simply hit the IRR button and press compute after that. The calculator automatically calculates the IRR and presents the figure of 27.6% to you. See? Voila! You have calculated the NPV and IRR in just a few steps. Admittedly, these functions on the calculator are not so intuitive. You may want to spend some time to practice doing such problems to familiarize yourself with the calculator. To decide whether to accept or reject the project in this case, both NPV and IRR will lead you to the same conclusion. NPV is positive, so we accept the project. Likewise, since the cost of capital for Trimcorp is lower than the IRR, we accept the project. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.